The Rubiaceae, the coffee family, phonetically spelled Rubiacea. Characteristics of the Rubiaceae, they are dicots. They have a worldwide distribution, but especially in tropical areas. These tend to be woody understory plants, with uh, very few of them naturally occurring in temperate re regions. Um, most are not at all uh, frost um, sense, uh, resistant. The leaves are usually opposite and simple, which means their margins are not uh, complicated. The flower is, uh, has fused petals, called a corolla, that, so it's a little tube with um, the petals kind of flaring at the end. The fruit varies. Uh, some of them produce droops, others schizocarps, capsules, or berries. They're widely used for medicines by indigenous people. There's a lot of strange alkaloids and different things in these species. And uh, economically, these uh, rank high up there. Coffee, especially, but also quinine and um, serpivipacac. The gardenia, which is a landscaping plant, and uh, madder, which is used to make a dye, among others. Characteristics, um, you can see on the right this uh, kind of pinkish flower that's uh, very typical of this family, the fused uh, corolla there, and then the flare at the end. There is um, a picture on the left, number four, it's labeled, of a coffee bean, which is not a bean, and uh, the outside uh, fleshy bit is uh, removed before uh, that inner seed is uh, used and uh, roasted. And uh, on the left, you can see uh, similar uh, uh, diagrams of the same plants. This is the family Rubiaceae in the order Gentianales. Uh, it's the fourth or fifth largest fanding family, uh, depending on uh, who you listen to. And uh, it's a case of the lumpers are in charge. They've been uh, aggregating species rather than creating new ones. And even so, they have about 13,000 species in this family. Here we are with our location on the plant evolutionary tree. We are up in the rosid group on the upper right. Notable species, coffee, generally is Caffea arabica, but sometimes it's Caffea canifora. Gardenia, very widely grown in a little bit warmer areas. Quinine, uh, used to be much more important than it is now, but it's still used to make quinine water. And uh, madder, Rubia tinctoria. Here are some examples. Uh, medicinal is uh, quinine. It's uh, native to South America, and the bark extract has been used by uh, low native people for many, many years. They used it as a muscle rea They used it because of its muscle relaxant properties, which uh, helped them stop shivering from cold. One might thought they could have tried maybe getting some more blankets on, but at any rate, that was what they used it for, and it stops fevers, uh, kind of for the same reason. And uh, then people realized that it was effective in treating malaria. And so it became an extremely important um, uh, herb um, in, you know, 1600s and uh, earlier. And uh, um, all kinds of complicated politics occurring because of uh, the Peruvians trying to restrict people um, exporting propagules so that it couldn't be grown elsewhere and people smuggling out seeds and so on. Um, so it uh, is, was used as a malarial treatment. Uh, it's very bitter, and uh, it's not soluble in water, the extract that's important for malaria. So um, it needed to be put into wine or alcohol, and then generally sugar added to get over the bitterness, and the gin and tonic was born. Uh, today, however, uh, there are other uh, much more um, effective chemicals used to treat malaria, and so uh, the gin and tonic is just sort of a a remnant of that medical history, and today's tonic water containing considerably less quinine because it doesn't need to be medicinal. Uh, there's a variety of other alkaloids also produced by this species. Uh, another medicinal um, usage is um, the, the Ipecuana plant, um, Carapicia Ipecuana, that was used uh, to make uh, syrup of Ipecac which um, was used uh, in cases of poisoning to uh, force somebody to throw up in order to um, uh, get the poison out of their system. It's now felt that it probably causes more damage um, than it uh, helps, and so it's no longer uh, recommended as an emetic. And um, it, uh, this genus was previously called Psychotria, which um, is, uh, suggests the drug properties of uh, this, this group of plants. The, uh, we've already talked before about the hooker's lip flower. I've showed you that before. That uh, plant is also in this genus. And um, 
They uh, have a particularly high concentration of dimethyltryptamine, which is a psychedelic drug. It's uh, very important in uh, different mammalian um, biological pathways and has, um, when you get an excess of it, it causes all sorts of um, uh, hallucinogenic or psychotropic um, reactions, and hence the, the genus name originally was Psychotria. And additionally, this, um, uh, this plant, uh, the roots are harvested and combined with leaves of a tropical vine to make um, a very potent brew called ayahuasca in, uh, by the South American native people. Horticulturally, this is gardenia. There are quite a few genera, uh, quite a few species of gardenia. The most commonly grown one is Gardenia thunbergia, which is what's shown here. But there are um, several other uh, types. And then, uh, again, this uh, has uh, been selected for and hybridized. And there are double flowers and uh, some that hardly look like um, a typical Rubiaceae flower anymore. Um, they originate in the east coast of South Africa and uh, are generally small trees or little shrubs, and uh, the scent of these is, is just heavenly. So they're used both in perfumes and in landscaping. And uh, again, as is kind of the, the meme with this um, family, they're used in African medicines. They do not tolerate frost, however, so uh, I've seen them even in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. They have to be in a protected house or they can't make it through winter. Uh, edible examples of the Rubiaceae, coffee uh, pops to the top immediately. This, uh, in today's world, uh, coffee is the second most valuable world commodity, only traded more, um, uh, more value traded in it than oil. So uh, that's a lot of coffee. Roughly 100 million people are dependent on the coffee trade for their livelihood. They're either growing it or picking it or brewing it or shipping it. And uh, in the U.S. alone, and just in 2009, $15 billion worth of coffee was um, imported. They originally from high altitude humid forests in Africa. The natural distribution is threatened today by development and um, there are some uh, efforts being made to uh, preserve some of those lands. Uh, the outer fruit is removed and the beans are roasted um, but they are just the seeds. They are not actually beans. And caffeine is an alkaloid uh, like uh, so many of the other um, uh, chemically active um, compounds that are uh, found in this family. And there you can see some, some developing fruits in the upper picture and then the flowers in the lower picture. Iowa natives of the Rubiaceae. The buttonbush is a lovely plant uh, that likes uh, kind of wet areas, a little woody tree. Uh, there's some growing naturally at uh, Grays Lake and Whitmer Park and many other places in um, uh, central Iowa. It has lovely little flowers, that those funny little um, protuberances from it um, are the, the tubular corollas that uh, the butterfly there is using his proboscis to poke down into the bottom and get some nectar. A beautiful example of coevolution. The, the insect has evolved the mouth parts to tap the, the nectar out of the flower and the flower has, or the plant has developed a flower that um, fits the insect just perfectly and then of course there's an exchange of pollen in the um, uh, whole process. So the plant gets pollinated and the insect gets fed. These are toxic plants, toxic to cattle and cows and different things, but in general they don't taste good and so the incidence of poisoning is fairly uh, low. Another Iowa native, not quite so much fun, is uh, bed straw. It uh, is the kind of sticky plant that tends to stick to your genes if you're walking in a prairie, but it is native. And it was used historically to stuff um, uh, bed ticks that um, when people had mattresses that they just had dried um, plant materials in for padding. Uh, this stuff, because it's so kind of sticky, it tends to um, stay fluffy even after you've um, put it in your mattress and laid on it. And additionally, it has a pleasant odor, so um, two reasons to use it in your mattress. It is edible. Sometimes people make a tea from it. The leaves are whorled. Uh, hard to get a good picture of them sometimes, but you can see in the drawing on the right. And, and then again, the tubular flowers. And uh, the seeds are sometimes used as a coffee substitute. Toxicity, as I already said, uh, many species are toxic, but there's not much poisoning because uh, they're so bitter that uh, animals, uh, even pretty hungry animals, don't want to eat them. I found a quote from the National Institutes of Health. In traditional medicine, more than 60 species in this family are used in more than 70 medicinal indications. These are by native peoples traditional medicine, um, including everything from malaria to uh, coughs hypertension and diabetes, 
and so um, biological screening has been um, uh, going ongoing uh, to uh, produce, pursue these leads. And uh, many of these plants do indeed exhibit antimalarial, antimicrobial, antihypertension, antidiabetic, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory activities. The compounds generally uh, responsible for uh, the poison or the medicine, depending on the dose, are uh, indole alkaloids, such as the dimethyl um, tryptamine is an indole alkaloid, terpenoids, and anthroquinones. For more information, there's Wikipedia. Uh, the Q, uh, a huge garden um, in southern uh, London, southern England near London, has uh, quite a bit about the coffee family. And then uh, if you want to read about the brew that the native people in uh, Peru make uh, with the ayahuasca, uh, there's, that's on Wikipedia. And that concludes the Rubiaceae.